I remember there used to be a big debate about Christian television and modern television and the whole idea that what their children were watching at the time was so bad for them that they would grow up into some kind of a, well, you know, some kind of bad example of what a Christian should be, you know, so everyone was worried about what you see because what you see wasn't what you get, you know, a lot of programming and kind of things were going on on television that people were worried about influencing their children, and they were right, it did. Because you see, it is the end of the world, and things are changing and developing in such a way that we can't keep up with how much information really is influencing society as well as the children that are growing up. But the Bible already recorded that for us. Basically, it said, if your eye is full of light, how great is the light within? You know, now we have a whole different perspective. You know, we, we do know that, you know, people are looking at things, you know, and seeing things and becoming like what they see, you know, kind of like violence and all those things are greatly influencing people into becoming violent. We know that's true. We know it's a fact. Now, we still let people do what they want to do. They choose to see things and participate in that interaction between their eye and opening up themselves to what they see and what influences their soul. Because they don't realize really how much of what outside influences can go inside and make them into something they never intended to be. The same thing is true, whether you know it or not, about your hearing. You see, we used to say that, you know, reading was a good thing, you know, you should read the Word. But the Bible says faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. A lot of people nowadays are listening to things like shock jock radio, you know, talk radio where people are being slammed and crammed and damned and told to go to hell and do all kinds of things. You know, kind of like the Rush Limbaugh's, you know, and the Glenn Beck's, you know, the people that go on radio in order to create a quote-unquote conversation, which is really a confrontation about trying to make people pay attention to something that they would never have done in real life. Of course not, because you basically want to get along with your neighbor, don't you? After all, Jesus said, Love one another as I have loved you. And this is the greatest of all commandments, that you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Or do you? You see, my neighbors are Muslims, and I hear a lot of Christians talking about how bad that is. And that's a lie. It's not. You see, that's the problem with God's word confronting man's actions. God's word is true. Man's actions are not necessarily true. God's word will come true no matter what we do. Man's actions will always prove false unless they are founded and bound by the word of God. You have to find yourself in the word of God, doing the word of God, and accomplishing the word of God, or else your structure you're building on the foundation of your salvation will come tumbling down. And that's what's happening to a lot of Christians nowadays because they become violent and they've discovered that, you know what, this violent thing isn't working. Society has become more violent. So we want to become more violent to be like society. Really? Is that what you want to do is be like the world and learn the world's ways? Because nations shall not lift up sword against nation but they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks, and they'll learn war no more. You see, what we're going towards is what we're becoming. Let me ask you this. Are you easily provoked? Watch yourself on the Internet or watch yourself on Facebook or some social media, how quickly you react. Watch yourself texting and how immediately you think you know what's being said when really you don't. How well do you read what's being said and what's your comprehension level when it comes to really knowing what that person is saying and are you listening to them? Most husbands and wives discover immediately that reaction and interaction of training themselves to pay attention to what's going on in the other person's emotion as opposed to what they're being said and what they're saying because a lot of times the emotion reveals what's going on inside. 
And that's part of the problem with Christianity today because it's become an emotive type of faith, not a devoted type of relationship. You see, emotions are good, but they can't lead you to God. Emotions will lead you wherever the emotions are pointed at. And you can redirect those emotions any way you want to. And that's what happens a lot of times with what people are doing when they hear things. They're being redirected with their emotions and not their devotions to the Word of God. Each one of us each day should examine ourselves to find out if we are in the faith, because that's what Jesus said to do. In Vidibo, we try to choose those things that would inspire us and conspire in our heart to redirect us, not back into the world, not cause us to hear what the world has to say, or the latest buzz of the buzzwords, or the latest visual stimulation that we can find simply by looking at the internet, or the television set, or even sometimes our neighbor fighting, or something going on in the neighborhood. Rather, we choose to, in vidivo each day, redirect the focus of our eyes, the attention of our ears, the opening of our soul and our heart to the Word of God. Because when we do that, when we redirect ourselves back to God, we found that our foundation is sure, and that all the things that wash over us, the tides, the storms of life, the wind blowing, all those things that people are easily blown around with, we stand sure. If you've ever noticed in a storm, not every house is destroyed. Sometimes there's one that stands. And you wonder, well, why did that one stand? Because its foundation was sure and its structure was built upon the Word of God. That's what lives are like. You can tell a Christian who's had a relationship with God because when the storms of life hit, they're still standing. When the trials come, they're still speaking the Word of God. They're still telling you about their relationship with Jesus. They're not asking God to become something he's not, like a sugar daddy or to provide only good things, but rather they're trusting the Lord for whatever comes. And they're saying, not my will, O God, but thy will be done. Is that where you're at today? Because if you're not, then I ask you to redirect your attention back to the Word of God and listen to what God would say to you today as He speaks to your heart, as He opens your soul to His Spirit so that you would be filled not with your own direction but with the objection of what God wants you to become, which is His Son. He wants you to be just like Jesus today, even as He's called you to be Christian or Christ-like. You do not realize that you would have broken down under the weight of your cares, but for the renewing time with me. It is not what I say, it is I, myself. It is not the hearing me so much as the being in my presence. The strengthening and the curative powers of this you cannot know. Such knowledge is beyond your human reckoning. This would cure the poor sick world if every day each soul or group of souls waited before me. Be still and know that I am God. Remember that you must never fail to keep this time apart with me every day, every way that you can spend some time each day with me. Gradually you will be transformed physically, mentally, spiritually into my likeness. All who see you or have contact with you will be, by this intercourse that you have with me, brought near to me, whether they know it or not, or whether you see it or not. And gradually the influence of your spirit and mine together will influence all those around you. You are making one spot of earth a holy place. And though you must work and spend yourself ceaselessly because it is for the present time your appointed task, yet the greatest work you can do and are doing is done in this time that you spend apart with me. Forsake me not, for I wait upon you. Will you wait with me? Are you understanding this reality? Are you understanding that I am the Lord your God? Hear me. Seek me. Find me. Do you know that every thought, every activity, every prayer, every longing of the day is gathered up and offered to me now by my Son? He acts as high priest before me and brings to me every deed, every action, every thought, every word, 
every concept. O joy that I am with you! For this I came to the earth to lead men back to the spirit conversation with God, with my Father in heaven. And do you not know who I am? For behold, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Would that not be that reality we want for ourselves? That God could give us such a testimony that he could say, This is my beloved Son in whom I will please listen to him. And Jesus could say, If you've seen me, hey, you've seen the Father. Isn't that what you want to be like? Isn't that the highest idea? Isn't that what our hero should be rather than our heroes of the world? The only way to get that, the only way to be that, the only way to accomplish that in your life as well as mine is to spend time each day alone with God. Would you not do that today and wait on the Lord?